Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about left hand. Uh, some people have asked me to demonstrate some left hand things, and uh, I guess my left hand is different because a lot of, you know, in jazz today they do the comp style. you just have uh, pad chords and voicings in the left hand but you know the old uh, solo jazz penis they use what they call a swing bass system and basically what where that comes from you know that it, it's a uh, deviation from stride left hand and uh, the stride, of course, was the, the bass note in the chord. And that was great because it, it gave a nice beat to the song. And also, uh, it, it created a nice melody that the... various bass lines you know so your left hand was doing these bass lines and it also forced the, the piano player to change chords more often uh, and that was real nice except uh, you know it, it was kind of it, it, it was kind of bland in one sense so that progressed into what they call the uh, swing bass. And basically the swing bass was you hit the tenth in the chord. Whoop. And it also led to, you know, the walk, you could walk the bass. So, uh, the general rule on the swing bass is, is a tenth chord, tenth chord. That, that's the real basic, you know. Uh, but there's variations on that. Um, because you can, you can do uh, different things. Uh, you don't want to do too much sameness. You know, you break it up. Uh, definitely, um, generally on the one and three beat, you hit the tenth, but it doesn't have to be the tenth. You can hit the seventh. Or the tenth or even the ninth filled in. Um, and of course you can fill in the... harmonies on the tenth and uh, also you could hit a bass note as well so uh, and you use your ear just to what you like to play our uh, Teddy Wilson would do uh, on the three and four beat he would do a tenth like You know, so or the fourth, the fourth beat. So uh, the idea was to create these little melodies in the left hand with the tenth, and. Uh, you would also have some nice harmonies going on because the tenth was a beautiful uh, the sound, even the, even the uh, seventh when it's filled. And uh, the other thing is uh, on the second and fourth beat, of course, you hit the swing the swing chord, and that basically was just the uh, an inversion or. 
sound of the chord itself being put down. But they had sensitivities when, when you hear Art Tatum and uh, Teddy Wilson do that. Uh, when, when they put that swing chord down, it was all kinds of different touches from staccato to legato, loud, soft. I mean, it, and the idea of this complexity in the touch in the left hand was not just to be complicated, but it made the fabric of the tune. So, you know, the left hand enhanced the right hand improvisation. But at the same time, uh, the right hand determined what the left hand would do. Uh, so, uh, what I'm trying to say is, if you were blowing a line over here, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have room to hit the swing chord. So you would just uh, have two beats on that left hand. Or sometimes Art Tatum would go, and he'd keep the beat going by by the. And he tapped that, you know, his last finger. Um, one option. But uh, I wish I could, you know, sometimes it, you, it's, it's uh, hard to explain things. Uh, but uh, let's, just, let's just take a song like, uh, easy progression like I Cry For You. simple changes but uh, with the stride it just we're gonna go real slow and it's gonna be a little corny but just so you get the idea like starting off from the F to the D7 you, you know you could go so I another thing you do you can chip that uh, Tatum would do that uh, for the percussive type effect but you know you you do little lines leading into it. So, in other words, let's let's drop the right hand, and just because uh, it's going to get confusing for you. So, let's say you're. Let's try that. like that. You see, so you're going from a G7 to C. To see, that was just a different the things you're fooling around with on the D7 chord. You're just walking. Basically, you're doing a, you're hitting the tenth and then the chord, but you're walking the bass too, at the same time. To, and you, the right hand determines what the left does, and it just happens kind of automatic. 
Now you may have to start out, you know, just doing left hand. Like if I was just doing the left hand for that. Just uh, uh, doing accompaniment, but you're enhancing the uh, right hand, so it adds some style, uh, contrast. But if you heard, or if you listen to the in the '40s when uh, Tatum or Wilson played solo piano, that swing chord, especially at a, a slower tempo. Let, let's see. Sometimes the uh, swing chord is, is staccato, but uh, what I'm doing a lot is I I hit the hit the note and then I put the pedal down. So you get that uh, there's a certain effect there, and you use your ear on this. To, is the tenth and the swing chord. And you kind of make it up as you go along. It's difficult at first, but after a while it just be, you don't even think about what's going on. It just, uh, it just comes natural. And uh, the, I think solo piano, the only way to play solo piano is, uh, is if you uh, play, you've got to play uh, swing bass, in my opinion, because if you just do the, the comp style stuff, you just don't sound real good. Now, it sounds good in a band, but if you're doing solo, you just got to have more going on, in my opinion, especially a swing song. And so, uh, I don't know if that was helpful, but you have to experiment with those tenths and chords. And listen to Teddy Wilson and Art Tatum and how they, how they uh, played the left hand, how they did those chords, how they, how they hit that swing chord, and the touch they had, how they pedaled. Uh, all those things can be so helpful. Listening is probably the best teacher, in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Joe Lester, he said that, uh, you know, when, you, when they play in the after hours, if somebody was there and they didn't play left hand, which left hand, they, they'd make fun of them. they say, oh, you got your left hand in your pocket. You go home. You go home. And uh, so you had to play, you had to play your butt off, and you had to be good, the left hand and right hand, and all kinds of stuff going on. And uh, now you didn't make any money back in them days, but you had the esteem and the approval of your musician, musician buddies. 
and uh, so it's a little different today because <laughs> I think uh, I think we're more interested in making money and not what somebody thinks of us. Uh, but that was a different age. Uh, there were a lot of heavy demands on the on the piano player. He had to he had to play left hand, right hand, and you had to be good. Um, but uh, I would suggest uh, listening to uh, Tatum in the 40s and when he did all the solo. Well, in the third, late 30s too. A lot of the early 30s was a lot of the stride. He did a lot of stride uh, stuff, Fats Waller style, which is beautiful and tremendous. But uh, in the later 30s and uh, 40s, he perfected his swing bass system in the left hand. And that is beautiful to listen to, and uh, just just to listen to the way they hit that swing chord. Just the various touches on the chords and the tense and how it all blended together, you know, to form a beautiful improvisation. So it's a challenge. It really is. Um, now I apologize. That was a poor. It was a poor lesson there. Um, but we just uh, just kind of improved it here, and uh, maybe it's enough to stimulate interest to listen at least to uh, those great artists. You know when they played and appreciate uh, how they hone their talents to such a degree. Uh, and of course, um, you know if you hear. Uh, our Tatum play the Shout or Liza and Tiger Rag and you see how fast they had that swing bass stride going and it just uh, it's just amazing uh, so and I'm gonna put down uh, Liza here pretty close to the way he played it now I can't play it as fast as he did but it's just a and I'm gonna try to put out the notes for you on that left hand uh, just if you're interested in that type of thing uh, so anyway, that's all I know. God bless. I also wanted to share with you uh, another blessing. You know my uh, old Roland keyboard just uh, kind of broke down and on its last leg the uh, amplifier burnt up, keys weren't playing and this, I'm showing you this old upright which I'm playing today. Uh, you've got to see the carvings. I don't know how if you can even see it on this crazy uh, video, but there are uh, engravings and beadwork all over it. I even got peacocks in the side of it. Uh, even the kneeboard has uh, various braids and carvings and uh, original ivories and ebonies, which are in excellent condition. All I did was have to buff them. So uh, this came out of a church in Mount Airy, Maryland. They were throwing it away and uh, it was a train wreck as far as the inside is concerned. Uh, I had to put new, well being a technician it was easy. I could get parts at a good price and the labor is free. Uh, so I put new hammers and bass strings and key bushings, action parts and uh, a lot of things and uh, whipped it in shape and it's got a lovely lovely tone I'll demonstrate here for you in one second and uh, it has a real nice tone the highs it's very clear but uh, mellow and the bass really nice the uh, supposed to be uh, 1920 style American made piano so that has a more mellow <laughs>